What's, What's up, guys? guys? It's your boy Anthony. And it's your girl Rio. And we're back at it again with, with another video. video. So we're back with another video today, guys. And today we're doing the top 10 scary urban legends that are actually true. And basically, um, usually when you hear urban legends, they aren't true. Like, for example, you know, the Tooth Fairy or like, you the know. The Tooth Fairy or like Santa Claus. You know, things like that. Even um, though you thought it was true when you were younger. You thought Santa Claus was real. Cause that's how I was younger, obviously. You still believe in Santa Claus. Anyways, <laughs> so we're gonna react to this, but before we get into the to the video, don't forget to like, like comment, and subscribe. and subscribe. And thank you guys for watching with us. And yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. This is gonna be really fun and scary. Fun scary. I've done so many urban legend videos now I can't even count. And you know what makes some better than others? It is actually some truth to them. Suddenly, it's not just a silly made up story, it's something that could be true. And that doubt, that slight bit of uncertainty, well, I think that makes them even scarier. These are 10 of the very best. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 urban legends that are actually top true. Starting off number 10 now, we have Cropsy. Some of you guys may have heard me talk about this one before. It's the the story of the boogeyman of Staten Island. He was rumored Staten to be an homicidal maniac who escaped from a mental I'm asylum. sorry, but from New York, it gotta be from Staten Island. Because Staten Island has been even recognized as part of New York City. But you know, it's part of New York City. He would hunt for children <laughs> and drag them back to the ruins of a hospital where he lived. Witnesses always he said lived he in had a hook for a hand. That's scary. I saw the picture. That's scary. Kids, perhaps yeah, that's even told to them by their own parents who wanted them to be more wary of strangers. They yeah, I hate when, like, back in the day, parents would always tell you, don't do this or the boogeyman's going to get you or mm -hmm. they'll try to Which use, is messed a little, up. use a little scare tactics and then imagine it really happened. That's crazy. Then then, like, in 1972, oh the boogeyman became real. News broke of a real-life corpsey man called Andre Rand. He was a former janitor at the local school for mentally he's disabled children. Rand was arrested. Oh, he's a janitor for the mentally disabled students. Jennifer Schweiger, a 12 and he's mentally girl disabled himself. Syndrome. He lost his job over the case and moved into the now abandoned school that he used to work in. He was eventually convicted of murder. I feel like also people that do these type of things do they think clearly? Because like you're going to take. Babe, he's clearly not thinking clearly because. But I'm just saying, like, you're going to take a kid from their family, and what do you expect to do with them for, like, what do you expect? Like, you're going to hold them forever? Like, I don't know, but clearly he's not in his right mind if, you know, you're even doing that to begin with, like. And police connected him to the disappearance of four other children. No bodies were ever recovered. Wow. Nine, guys, we have the Bunny Man. I talked the about this Bunny legend Man. in my West Virginia video, if you remember. The story goes that in 1904, a mental asylum closed down. While transferring inmates to a new facility, one of the buses crashed. This is the Both reason the why, like, whenever, like, I don't know why, but ever since I was a kid, like, whenever I see, like, people in costumes like these... <laughs> Especially in like if you if you, you live in, scared. if you live in New York City, you know like in Times Square and stuff like that, like you will see people walking around in costumes so people could take kids could take pictures with them. But like I've yeah. always been scared of people in costumes. You, you were scared of them? Yeah, it's just like why are you scared of them? They ain't gonna do nothing. Babe, shit. look at this. The bunny that's gonna be all nice over here killing people. This is why I'm scared. And I'm still Well, we I'm don't know if he killed this. anybody. We don't know. They just said that, you know, it was uh prison you know, regardless, truck. it's still something scary. Let, this is see. why, to this day, I do not like these people in costumes. Well, uh, if you ever meet you, any of you, any of you subscribers or viewers, you know, meet us in a costume. No. Don't. And then were killed or captured or trying to escape, but one actually did escape, known as the Bunny Man. He would then roam the land hunting scary. rabbits and then leaving their half-eaten carcasses for the locals to find. Sometimes the they would be hanging from a tree or a bridge. Although there are parts of the story that just don't add up, something strange happened in 1970. A couple driving their car at night had an axe thrown through their window by a man in a bunny suit. Two weeks later, another man found an axe wielding guy in a bunny suit chopping wood nearby who was gone by the time police arrived oh, are these not. linked together somehow is there more Did truth find to him? this than meets the eye no probably the not we have the body under the bed so the bunny man is still out there 
Bitch, I'm playing <laughs> Hotels and motels have become a common part of society. People have swapped stories about guests who discovered that the mattress they were sleeping on was either above or even stuffed with the body of a murder victim. A grisly tale for sure, but one that was confined to the realms of myths and legends. That's scary. Imagine that like you were like in a room, a hotel bed, and like the bed is has a body in it. Or under it. Or under it, and you know you just never knew. That's crazy. That's scary. Like, that type of stuff would make me never go sleep anywhere else but my house. What if they in your house? Babe, I do. <laughs> Tonight, a case in Colorado occurred involving a couple who slept on a mattress containing a body. The police what? kept the details of that close to their chest. But in 2010, a huge story broke when guests at a Memphis motel discovered they had been sleeping above the body of Sony Milbrook, a missing person at the time. A boyfriend, Lakeith Moody, was convicted of the crime. Many people were horrified and vowed to give their hotel Yo, bed that's crazy. closer inspection. Facts. But Every time I go to a hotel, I'm checking out. Okay. The main robber. That's M-A-I-N-E. The state. For many years, visitors to Maine's North Pond have reported that something strange was going on there. Time after time, people reported that things were going missing. Not just one person, one time, many people, many times. Batteries and food would vanish from cabins, while flashlights just disappeared from camping tents. People thought either the earth itself was swallowing it all up, <laughs> or there was a thief at work. It yeah. turns out they were right about that. In 2013, a game warden discovered Christopher night living alone in the woods for 27 years this man had been there watching hikers 27 years this older than me That's when taking them for questioning knight admitted that he was responsible for around 40 robberies a year i mean stealing batteries is one thing but i feel like if you were being watched all those years and then you were That's weird. right about it that would be even because imagine yeah. you and your family like imagine you and your family go mm. like camping every year that mm. means he's been watching you watching every you year every that year. you go camping Seen their kids grow up. Yo, people are crazy, yo. People are really crazy. Like, it scares me, like, how crazy people can be. The Falling Lawyer. Now, I've lived in Toronto for quite a few years now, and I've personally heard this story floating around the place, but I never thought it was actually the falling true lawyer. until now. They say that years ago, there was a lawyer who loved to show off how strong his office windows were in his building that overlooked what? the city. Every time someone came to visit, he would take a long run up, jump, and hurl himself right into the window. Sure enough, the window would remain intact. Although we'll never know if this actually impressed his visitors. Well, this lawyer was really and his name was Gary Hoy. He was a senior partner at his firm with an office on the 24th floor. On July 24th floor. Some law students came to visit. He took his usual leap at the window, but this time, after years of it being weakened, it smashed. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yo, that's, you're getting that's... a tour of his office, and, and he's just like, he's been doing this for years, every day, like, to show how strong his thing is. He's running, and he just he actually never falls figured, like, okay, this, I might be making this window less and less strong mm -hmm. did he from die the, from the 24th floor i mean let's see to his death and yeah. the improbable story became somewhat of a local legend next to another what do you now, do how do you go back home <laughs> secrets for many years longer than people can even remember the people of puebla in mexico have talked about the tunnels secret tunnels mm. that were built under their city by the spanish conquistadors cool. in the 1500s it's been almost half a millennia since then and the stories became legend people looked for me. them but they found nothing i ain't going through no tunnel that's just around my city. I actually did that one time. I wouldn't be going through no tunnel that's around my city because you don't know what's who's in there. Yeah. Especially I'm, at nighttime or something. Like, especially if I'm not with a with a, group, a big group of people, I ain't mm -hmm. going there. I remember my school did that while I was in middle school. They took us to a mining tunnel, like a mining area where they used to do mining. And honestly, it was crazy. Like going down there, like as you're going down and you see how much house excuse me how small they had to crawl to get to places and it was crazy because i'm like man like one like misstep like everything could fall down you mm -hmm. know what i mean even though like that time it was secure but i'm just saying like that's mm -hmm. yeah 
the tunnels became a myth, something to scare the kids into believing there was a dark maze of caverns beneath them. In 2014, construction workers were in the middle of an urban remodeling project when they stumbled upon an old tunnel. Surely the legends weren't true. The Puebla History Center took over the site to investigate, and yes, it was the fabled tunnels people had spoken about. Wow. They determined the tunnels were built in 1531, right wow. after the city was founded. Members of the Catholic Church supposedly used the tunnels to transport treasure and other property in and out of the city without people knowing about it. Parts of the tunnels are now I'm open pretty to sure mm -hmm. the government got something. Oh yeah, for sure. Something going on that we don't know. They probably got a lot going on that we don't know about, actually. Yeah. But that's a different story for another day. Public giving you the chance to walk through the dark halls of an urban legend that came true. Coming at number four now, guys, we have the alligators. I definitely talked about this one in our New York urban legends video. Many years ago in New York, people would say that there were alligators. Yeah, I used to think that too. As a kid, no, nah, I used to think as a kid, like, I guess maybe. Um, I just always thought there was alligators in the sewers. I don't know for some reason. Um, like but I always knew there was no alligators in New York, though. Mm, Maybe like know. Florida, yeah. I don't know. I just thought they were in the sewers. Like, if you ever go down there, there'll be alligators down there. Isn't it mad dirty? Would they survive? Mm hmm. Boy once flushed his pet alligator down the toilet. Yeah. Years later, he reached into the sewer grate to retrieve a lost baseball. At that moment, a fully grown alligator leapt up from below and ripped his arm clean off. What? The same what? alligator he had flushed away. Many people dismissed the whole story. Alligators, New York, crazy. However, in 1959, Teddy May, the commissioner of New York during the time of these rumors, wrote about the alligators in his tell-all book. He said that he and his inspectors did find alligators in the New York sewers in 1935. They were up to two feet in size. It took two years for them to clear them all out. More than enough time for the two facts years? to get blurred with fiction. Moving on to number three now, we have That's the crazy. dog boy. That's so many crazy. people in Arkansas, they know the stories of the dog boy. Kids swap tales of a werewolf-like man who roams around the town town of Quitman. Some even say they've seen him. Many of them might not know that the story is somewhat based in real life. Gerald Bettis was born in Quitman in 1954. By the time he was a young boy, the neighbors were already calling him evil. They said he liked to he capture evil, stray picture. animals and torture them in twisted oh, experiments. Now, yeah. once, you, once you see a kid doing some twisted stuff, doing about. some twisted stuff, torturing, cutting, stabbing, whatever, stabbing, burning, burning. You already know mutilating animals. You need to be. You need to be watch out for that kid. You gotta watch out for that kid. Mm -hmm. You gotta bring them somewhere because. What do, you, what do you say? Bring them somewhere. What do you mean? Bring them somewhere? Like bring them to like, like a mental health oh. specialist. That's what I think I mean. when you say bring them somewhere, like they need to get <laughs> kicked out or something. Like <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. But like clearly something's wrong because those are the people that also can turn out, you know, to be these murderers serial and killers. stuff, serial killers when they get older. Turn into the boogeyman. Yeah, that's scary. Older, turned on his parents, tormenting them until, at the age of 27, his dead father was found in his home. The newspapers said it was illness, but others said it was murder. Beres then kept his mother in the house until she was finally taken away and looked. placed in protective mm -hmm. custody. His mother testified against him, and he was given life in prison, where he died a few years later. They Talk say that his spirit still haunts that house, and that he's often seen roaming the area as a ghost on all fours with shaggy hair like a dog. At the number two spot, now, <laughs> we have Charlie No Face. Some of you may. Have oh my heard God, that's scary. That's scary. Video. Charlie No Face is, is the story because of a boy called Charlie who once got electrocuted while climbing on an electric pole to try and see into a bird's nest he was horrifically Whoa. disfigured his face had practically melted off eyes That's crazy. nose mouth one of his ears and one of his arms all completely gone it also turned his skin a sickly green somehow he survived and lived out his life in the small town rarely showing his face to the other locals people would share the charlie, story no, charlie face. no face but because nobody saw him the story became nothing more than an urban legend but it wasn't the story was actually Actually true, all except for the name. Charlie's real name was Raymond Robinson. <laughs> That's an actual he was friendly to people whenever they saw him, and Yo. he 
responsible for the many hauntings that became associated that's with the sad legend. but that shit is and scary you know? now we have polybius you may remember this from my video game urban legends video I, I don't know none of these none of these urban legends in 1981 whenever they were forced off it they felt nauseous stressed or even had seizures some people noticed the game was being serviced a lot more than usual instead of once a month polybius was being checked by men in black suits every single week they would what? copy its hard drive leave all of the money and then be gone until the next week people believed they were from the cia and the polybius was all part of a mind control program that sent subliminal messages yeah. to its players well, a lot of this is debatable there really was a kid who got sick during an arcade marathon contest in portland in 1981 a few days after that federal agents really did seize a load of arcade cabinets they said it was all part of a major gambling bust this is where people tend to differ in opinion some say that the story of polybius was inspired by the events others say the events are proof of the story that's crazy and truth together they make something better than either of them i think is this the start of a new series shall we look at more creepy urban legends that have their stories rooted in true events or shall we just keep doing our world tour of urban legends is this going to split the viewers in half we'll find out in the comment section below thanks for watching as always guys my name is danny burke and i will see Wow, that was pretty interesting. I, there was a lot of urban legends that I didn't know. First of all, at this point, I might as well stay in my house and never go outside. <laughs> to be honest, because like you can't be scared, baby. I'm here. Any, yeah, any, but any they of y'all? they get both of us? You can't get both of us. I got the strap. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I'm just gonna stay indoors. This is why I'm just gonna stay in the city. This is why I'm just gonna stay in the city. I feel like the city don't really hear shit like this. Like, it's not true, there's alligators in the, in the sewer. Yeah, but I'm talking about the people, like, you know, crazy people just running around killing people and stuff. Like, really, you be hearing about these stuff in the, these small neighborhoods and stuff like that? You mean the small towns? Small towns. This is why I'm just gonna stay. And NYC, even though NYC got crazy people too, I'm not gonna lie. But it's, a, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's not like no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a little different. I don't know. I kind of. And then I see I ain't talking about Staten Island. I kind of want to learn about some more. You stupid. I kind of want to <laughs> learn about some more, you know, urban legends. Like, tell me if you guys have any urban legends that you, you know, may have been taught when you was a kid mm -hmm. or heard of. Because I never, most of these I never heard of. Yeah. Only I never Boogeyman. Heard of these. Only the Boogeyman and the alligator thing. But that's the only thing. So, yeah, if there's any urban legends that you guys know of or any just. Any stories that you've been told, mm -hmm. um, just let us know in the comments below. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.